safari today. We're talking all about bird feet. We have a little, little bit of noise around. You can hear there's wild birds around too. Oh, yeah. We got Ringo here, and I'm Caitlin. And then we also are joined by a couple of emos today. So, I did want to start by saying thank you to anyone who has donated already. We are running on donations right now since we can't have anyone come out to the ranch and visit us quite yet. We're hoping soon we'll see, but we are trying to all stay safe here. So you'll notice we're observing our social distancing and all of that. One day we'll be happy to welcome you guys back but until then we are running on donations so we do want to say thank you for anyone who's donated so far we do have the donation link so the link to our website lionhabitatranch.org is attached to this streaming safari and also the link to the amazon smile so if you guys have not attached us to your amazon smile account yet if you're purchasing anything through amazon a small portion will go to us if you attach us to amazon smile so we really appreciate any of those donations. Every little bit helps. So if you guys are saving on that cup of coffee or something, you want to throw it our way, that's super helpful. We also have Aussie paintings for sale. So if you do have somebody who has a birthday coming up, are you nervous of the birds up there? Just looking at all the birds that are playing in the sky. <laughs> so think of us if you're looking for a present. You can buy one of those gorgeous Aussie paintings. Or if you just had a couple extra dollars to throw away, we appreciate that. Thank you guys so much for continuing to support us and check in. Let's go ahead and talk about bird feed. So we have Ringo out today. Ringo is a blue and gold macaw, and we'll look at his feet a little bit closer. When you see him standing on my hand, you can actually tell two of his toes are sitting in the front, and two of his toes are situated in the back. That's called zygodactyl, and those are the best kind of feet for climbing fly around, but they also do a lot of climbing on cliffs and in trees. They want feet that help them climb to get to all those seeds and nuts and foraging items that they find when they're out in the wilderness. So the best kind of feet for these guys is climbing feet. However, if you take a look at our emus, you'll notice that they probably don't need to climb very much. So these guys actually have better running feet. So you'll see they have all three of their toes pointing forward. So these guys are better at running. They can actually run up to about 30 miles per hour, and that's so that they can get away from natural predators. So their natural predator, these guys are from Australia, and their natural predator is the dingo. So they wanna be able to run a little bit faster than the dingo. But there are actually all kinds of birds with all kinds of different feet. So these are a couple examples that we have here on the ranch, but I also wanted to touch on some other feet. So you will see, um, if you ever see an eagle or a hawk or another bird of prey, they have kind of similar feet to these guys where they do have four toes that kind of spread all the way out. Those are made for grasping and they're a lot thicker and a lot stronger with a lot sharper talons than these guys have. Parrots are not hunters, so they don't really need to hunt for their food. But if you ever see an eagle or a hawk or another bird of prey, we call those, they need to be able to grasp their prey so they'll actually swoop down and grab their prey right up off the ground so they need good feet for grasping then i know it's been a while now so if anyone oh i think we have a question we do unbird related okay. how is bentley how is bentley uh, we <laughs> bentley so we just want to touch on bentley bentley is great we love all of our uh lions and we're working on actually giving all of our lions baths right now. So they're all coming in and we're all getting them nice and clean and ready for you guys. So when you come to see them, they'll be nice and fluffy. Another question? Yes, how did you acquire a macaw in the desert? Oh, good question. So yeah, these guys are usually from the Amazon and they're from more tropical regions. However, these guys are really popular in the pet trade. So Ringo is actually a pet surrender. A lot of our parrots are pet surrenders because people get these guys as pets because they think they're so pretty and they're fun and they talk, which they do sometimes. And they are a lot of fun. We love to hang out with these guys, but they're also a lot of work. It's like having a two-year-old for the rest of your life. So if anybody out there has any little siblings that kind of annoy them sometimes or any parents out there have those real little kids, it's like having a two-year-old for the rest of your life. They're loud, they're needy, they're messy, and they live about as long as you do. These guys can get up to about 60 years old, and so it's that lifetime commitment. And a lot of people will get these guys as pets and then not be able to have them anymore for various life reasons. So 
that's how we got Ringo. He was a pet surrender. His owners couldn't take care of him anymore, and so he came here to us, and we're happy to take care of him. And we're actually working today on getting all of their misters because it is starting to get warmer out. So we're getting all their misters up and running because these guys do need that nice, cool mist to keep them happy in the summertime. All right. So back to bird feet. Hold on. Oh, hold on. We have a tractor behind us, so we are working uh -huh. while we're doing this live stream. <laughs> He's taking his time. Yeah. All right, so after that tractor goes by, uh, I was going to say back, uh, we have another question. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us how long they live again? I missed it. Uh, they live about 60 years in human care. So these guys don't live quite as long in the wild just because it's a lot harder to live in the wild. So they live a little bit closer to 40 or 50 usually in the wild just because, yeah, <laughs> just because uh, it is harder to be in the wild. You know, there's predators, there's not as much food sources, stuff like that. But we can take care of them up until about 60. What does he eat? What does he eat? Good question. So he eats fruits and vegetables. He eats seeds and nuts. And then these guys actually have a special formulated kibble, just like you would give your dog a dry kibble. These guys have a dry kibble that we feed to them as well that has all of their nutrients in it. We kind of rotate that around so they don't get bored and they at least have new stuff to eat. Good questions. All right, so back uh, at the very beginning, I honestly think it was our first streaming safari. Uh, we talked about adaptations, and so that's a callback to these guys' feet are adaptations for what they need to use. And I know back then we talked about some birds with webbed feet. So if you ever see ducks or geese or anything like that, they have webbed webbing in between their toes because that helps them swim. Question. Um, what brand is the harness that you're using? And then maybe also just touch on why you shouldn't use, because some people do use Jesses, but why you shouldn't use those for smaller birds that are not raptors. Absolutely. So um, he is actually wearing an aviator harness right now. Um, it works really well. You can see, let's show off your stitching. Some of our birds did chew on it, so we have restitched it back together. Um, but any kind of harness that's small enough to fit these guys will work. These are really useful for it. They're really easy to get on and off. Um, but I've used a small kitten harness before for my, uh, my parrot at home. And the reason it is important to use a harness and not Jess's is these guys' legs are not as strong. So when we're talking about those grasping feet that birds of prey have, like eagles and hawks and things, they have really strong legs because they need to be able to pick up their prey. Sounds like the tractor's coming to get too. So <laughs> we'll let him pass by. And then we'll pick that up in a second. It's much faster this time. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, so when the eagles and hawks swoop down and they have to pick up their prey, they need really strong legs. So when you see Jesses, which are the little, they'll be like little bracelets that they wear around their ankles and they'll attach to the leash that way. Birds of prey have really strong legs so that's a really good way to hold on to them in case they do take off these guys don't need to pick up that prey so their legs just aren't built as strong so if you did attach to just to these guys they they could run the risk of breaking their leg if they do decide to take off and it snaps their leg a little bit it could break their leg so we want to keep the harness on parrots just because they're not as big and strong as our birds of prey he's really good at wearing it right Question. And then do our parrots share enclosures? Uh, mostly no. So we do have, most of our birds came to us separately and we haven't introduced very many of them. But we, hello. <laughs> but we do have, uh, we do have two of our parrots, Sunny and Chloe actually share an enclosure and they absolutely love each other. So they're very bonded to each other and they get along really well. Everybody else um, has a, their own nice large yard and then they have more keeper interaction because they are social animals so we do like to keep them nice so you can see he's nice and cuddly so uh we do like to give them a lot of interaction so they aren't lonely i love it so okay, we've talked about swimming feet we've talked about climbing feet we've talked about running feet, about perching feet, feet, perching feet. Thank you, all right so yeah if you guys see a lot of the birds you guys see These guys are, those are grackles. If you see any of those like black or really dark brown birds around Vegas, they're everywhere. Um, those are called grackles. Grackles, and we have a lot of house sparrows around as well. Um, any of <laughs> those kind of birds are 
um, perching birds. So they have three toes in the front and one toe in the back. It makes it really good for them to land on the perch and be able to hold on to it when they land. Question? Yes. Who's the guy in the enclosure next to you? All right, so these are our emus. This is Tweedledee right here. And Tweedledum is in the back there. These guys are pretty cute. They're kind of, they, I like to equate them to giant chickens because they kind of act like giant chickens. But they are very different. These guys are part of the rat type family. There are five different birds in the rat type family. And rat types tend to be runners. So they've got nice running feet. And she, these are both girls. And they're very interested in Ringo, I think, because he doesn't usually get to come over for visits. So they're coming over to see what Ringo's doing, which is climbing all over me. <laughs> Silly bird. There's that climbing feature. So you can see he's using his feet really well. His beak also helps out with that because he has that curved beak. Helps him with climbing. Perfect. All right. So we have a little bit of an activity for you guys today. But first, another question. Yes. Miss the name. Uh, the wind is stupid, basically. <laughs> there, there. Yeah, the wind is always our worst enemy. Uh, this is Ringo, this is Tweedledee, and in the back is Tweedledum. These guys are also pet surrenders, so we did get these guys. Um, some places it's legal to own emus, and uh, not, I believe, in Clark County. But these guys came from Nye County, and it's legal out there, so they couldn't take care of their emus anymore, so that's how we got these guys too. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our craft. We have a bit of a memory game. So we're going to head over to our table over here. And we're going to make some memory cards. So if you haven't played the game of memory before, uh, that is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be making some specialized parrot feet matchup game. So I'll show you an example. And then we're going to go ahead and make some. So you can sit up here, Ringo, and I'm sure try to take my sunglasses off. Ah, hi. <laughs> All right, so here is our example. So what we did is we had, we have six different birds. So we do have an emu, we have a sparrow, we have a duck. Uh oh, see that's that wind again. It's always our friend. Always when we try to do stuff with paper out here. We have an eagle, a parrot, and a chicken. So each of these birds have different types of feet. Oh, scratching, that's the one I missed. Uh, Hi. You're making it really hard for me. You want me to take them? <laughs> Can you like all my hair? Thank you. All right, here, sit on the table and help out there. Okay. <laughs> the wind is also helping, guys. The wind is so helpful. All right, oh, we found little rocks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. We have each of our different feet that match up. So we'll start with the chicken since we missed out on that foot earlier when we were talking. Chickens actually have scratching feet. So because chickens get most of their food off the ground, they want to be able to scratch and pull that up. Your little rush is working great, Maui. So this is, <laughs> too small, too small. this is the scratching feet. So they kind of have feet that will help them scratch the ground. We have our duck, which has swimming feet. We have, we talked about how our emu has running feet. Our, <laughs> there's so many noises happening at the ranch today. We're working on our sound system, so if you guys haven't caught in with us Melly while, was we've dancing. Been some, <laughs> while we've been having some uh, fun here. <laughs> <laughs> so every once in a while our sound system, they're working on getting it up and running and so we, uh, we hear some extra music. You can hear the lions are talking right now. I'll let them talk. Where was I? Was you it? were at running feet, and then they blow up blew away. Feet. All right, running feet for the emu. We have climbing feet for the parrot, like Ringo. And grasping feet for our eagle. He's one of the birds that catch things. Perching feet for sparrows. And, oh, chicken goes to scratch. There we go. And swimming feet. I'm missing a card. Oh, okay. All right, swimming feet. 
So you can see the webs in between the toes there. So I'm going to show you guys how to draw these. We're going to make our game and then we're going to play it. So Melly is here to help out. You can see she was grabbing us extra rocks. She's going to stay on that end of the table. We're going to try and maintain our six foot distance. All right, Melly, you want to grab a piece of paper? Yeah. Can I pick pink? You can pick whatever color you want. <laughs> Same thing goes for you guys. You can pick whatever color paper you want. As long as you're going to be able to see what you draw on it, it all works. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fold our... Hi guys, sorry about that. We started to warm up outside and our phone was not thickening. So our phone did start to overheat. As it gets warmer out, we're going to kind of be troubleshooting some of those issues and seeing how we can get it to last a little bit longer. But we also moved locations, so we're a little less windy. So hopefully this will go a little bit better. So we were at our first step. So we are going to fold our paper in half. When I was in school, they said, like a hamburger. Uh, fold it in half like a creamy part. And then we're going to cut it right down the middle on your whole block. You know, I thought he would drive the tractor over there. I'm starting to think he's doing it on purpose. <laughs> Take your half of paper and you're gonna fold it in half again. I don't remember the next step. This time, like a hot dog, so you're gonna fold it a long way so it makes a nice skinny piece of paper like that. You're gonna fold it in half again. And you're gonna do that to fold pieces. And then you're going to cut those down the middle as well. So I'm going to put mine in a stack so I can make one cut. You can cut them one at a time if you want. Or you can cut them together. Perfect. The goal here is we need to make 12 cards. Six for our birds and six for their feet. So once you get them looking like that, you have nice thin strips. You should have four of those. You are going to fold these ones in thirds. So you want to make three even pieces. So you're going to fold it in, fold it again. Mine are quite even, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then you're going to cut it on your folds again. So you do the same. All right, we're back again. Hopefully, it lasts a little bit longer this time. We're in the shade, we're trying a new phone, so hopefully we can get it uh, till the end here. We will be putting all of the videos together after we're done with the live, that way if you know, you're know you tuning in later, you can actually see this all in order. That might help you a little bit better. <laughs> so, let's see, we've cut most of our cards, so we've cut, we folded these in thirds, we are gonna cut those so they are nice little, almost squares. All right, so now, you should have 12 little squares of paper. So that is when we start our drawings. So let's start with our first All right. And we can go ahead and start with our eagle. So I'll show you how I drew this eagle. If you want to draw your eagle different, that is totally up to you. And you just start just kind of like a curve right here, all the way down towards his feet. And his feet have some here. Right here the feathers. How many are supposed to have? You're supposed to have 12. Okay, cool. <laughs> Perfect. So then you're going to curl this in, and that's where his beak is going to go. So eagles have a nice little hook on their beak. Okay. <laughs> you can do it. It's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. As long as you know it's an eagle, it's an eagle. So I'm going to draw his wing in here and give him a little tail down here. And then we want to draw his grasping feet. So remember, these guys are predators. So they have those nice grasping feet. So he's got four toes with big claws on the end. There we go. He's got grasping feet. I'll give him an eye up here at the top. 
and then just some feathers. There we go. And at the bottom, I'm going to write eagle to remind myself that I drew an eagle just in case I wasn't didn't do a great job. That's okay. Mine looks like a flamingo. <laughs> that that works. She knows it's an eagle. It says eagle. We're good. Yeah. Alright, so we drew our eagle. Next we can draw our chicken. So the chicken is going to start with some little feathers on top. So you're just going to make a little squiggly line. And then it's going to go into a curve down his back, up to the other side, where you're going to give him some tail feathers, just like the feathers on top of his head. And then you're going to take that down this way. Up here at the top, you're going to give him a little beak. And then you're going to bring this all the way down here. You want to leave a little bit of a gap there because that's where we're going to put his feet. Or her feet, I guess, as it were. And then add the little back foot behind that. You're going to want to give the chicken some scratching feet. So the chicken needs some toes in front with a smaller toe in the back. For scratching. I'm going to put a little eye on my chicken and I'm going to give him a little wing. Looks like a duck. Very cute. All right, I like it. So obviously you don't have to be very talented at drawing. <laughs> you, it's just all about fun. That's right. And the more we draw, the better we get. So. All right, so we did chickens and we did eagles. We'll do a parrot. So my parrot is flying. Oh, you can tell he's a parrot. So he's got a little head right here. Just a little curve, kind of like a candy cane or an upside down J. And then you're going to bring your wing out and give him some feathers underneath. And you're going to do the same thing on this side. Bring your wing out and then he gets feathers down this way. You want to give him a nice hooked beak just like Ringo. We are going to give him a hooked beak because that helps with his climbing. Because we know parrots have climbing feet. And he needs a body. And some feet down at the bottom. So we'll give him some feathers and it goes into his feet. I'm going to give him four toes, two in the front and two in the back. It's kind of hard to see because they're pretty little cards, but there it is. This is my best one. All right. This is my best one. <laughs> and I'm going to give him a little bit of a tail he looks and like his, his eye. So there we have it. Parrot. All right. Parrot at the bottom. Parrot. P-A-R-R-O-T. We have a parrot. And we need an emu. All right, this one's a little bit trickier. So we're going to start up. <laughs> well, he's ready. All right, here we go. So I'm going to start with his neck feathers, just kind of like a little squiggle. This is going to come down his neck, and then we're going to draw his back. So a little bit of a squiggle around on the bottom. And then this side is going to go around to the bottom. Same thing that we did with the chicken. We're going to leave a little space at the bottom so that we can add his feet in there. And emus have nice long legs because emus need to run. So there's the emu's three toes because they need a lot of nice fast running. And then you're going to make their head just kind of like... It's almost like a dinosaur right there. Give him a little bit of a beak. They are close to dinosaurs. They are related to dinosaurs. Give him a little tuft of fur on the top of his head and an eyeball. And I'm going to write emu on there. So I remind myself it's an emu. Yes, All right. It's your emu. They're all, no two emus are the same. <laughs> We did talk a while back about all giraffes and how their spots make them unique. So every giraffe is different. Same thing with birds. All birds are different. In fact, if you look at Ringo's face feathers right there, you see my pencil right here on the side of his face. Those are all different, just like giraffe spots are different. So every bird has their own unique pattern on there. Every macaw has a different fingerprint on their face. You're going to bring your line down this way, and then you're going to give this, we're making a sparrow, so we're going to give him a little wing, and then this one is going to come around like that, and you're going to give him a little tail. His feet just come out from underneath his nice fluffy belly, and he has perching feet. So he's got three in the front, and one in the back, with his little eye, and then I'm going to give him a little branch to sit on, because his feet are meant for perching. Keeps a good eyes. <laughs> That'll probably help. Birds usually have eyes. 
And I wrote Sparrow at the bottom. S P A R R O W. Very cute. I like your bright pink paper. Thank you. Very nice. Distracts from my non artistic <laughs> ability. All right, up next we have a duck. So the duck, I'm actually going to start with a oval like that. And then on top of the oval, I'm going to draw a little circle. So that's his head. I'm going to give him a tail and a bill because they have flat bills, not hook beaks like parrots. Give him a little eyeball and he needs a little wing. And then these are his webbed feet. So, ooh, oh, Molly, my webbed foot looks a little wonky. Ooh, that's <laughs> actually decent. Hey. Nice. And then I'm just going to outline my duck since I did use two circles. I'm going to kind of give him an outline. So Mine looks like a platypus. <laughs> it's that bill. All right, so I'm going to write duck on the bottom line. D-U-C-K, duck. It looks like a duck. It's very cute. All right, so we have all six of our birds done. Now we're going to work on our feet. So we're going to do, let's do grasping feet first. So grasping feet are the feet that go with our eagle. So we want to remember which foot goes with which bird because that's important when we play the game. So for our grasping feet, these guys kind of have big, chunky footprints. So you're going to kind of draw theirs a little bit separately. And they spread out nice and wide so they can pick up their prey. And then these guys have big, long claws. So we're going to add claw prints on the end here. And then I'm going to write grasping at the bottom because that's what eagle feet are meant feet. Because <laughs> we say that. <laughs> that is what we say. We say, look at the bird's feet. Oh, very cute. Very good. See, she's better at drawing the tracks. You know, we all have our talents. <laughs> so we have our grasping footprint. Grasping are for eagles. We got scratching. Oh, we have a question. Not a question. Heather said she saw a large family of ducks at Cornerstone Park at the lake. Oh, very nice. Okay. Nellie wants to know what kind. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So I think the one on our drawing is a uh, mallard. Mm -hmm. That's Robert a male mallard. Mallards. Why is it a male mallard, Nellie? You know what makes it a difference? The difference is the color. So male mallards, ducks have the green pigment on them, and then the females are actually like a solid brown. Very nice. So when you're seeing the ducks at the park, you can look for which ones are male and female, if they're mallards. Otherwise, that won't help you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have our scratching footprint. That goes to our chicken. So we want to make sure we're remembering which footprint goes to which bird. Remember that's important. So chickens need to scratch. And we'll do Ringo's next. He needs climbing feet. So these guys, remember, have two toes in the front and two toes in the back. That's that big word we talked about earlier. I think I mentioned that. Zygodactyl. On the first part of three. <laughs> On the first part of three, yeah. Hopefully so. only three. <laughs> Hopefully. So I'm going to write climbing at the bottom because that's what parrots need. Parrots need climbing feet. Ringo agrees. All right. Next is our running feet. So our running feet are emu feet. So they have those nice, big, chunky toes, all three of which are in the front. So that looks like that. And you're going to write running at the bottom. If I could write my N separately, that'd be good. R-U-N-N-I-N-G. Running feet. All right, next we have our perching feet. So perching feet are those birds we saw flying around that Ringo was really concerned about. Perching feet have three toes. Ooh, my table's not solid. There's girls in the background there. Chili and Pepper wanting to play memory with us too. They want to learn about bird feet. Question. Heather said they were big tall beige and brown ones with fat blonde babies oh <laughs> um, very detailed <laughs> oh the girls are talking so if 
females do roar as well. A lot of people think the males are the only ones that roar, but actually females will roar as well. And that's the way they can communicate with each other. And you can actually hear that up to five miles away. I believe that's chilly and Pepper's still sleeping. Yeah. So they have really long ones or it's short ones. So the one somebody asked if they were coughing when they were roaring. And that's actually just a short roar. So they have a little short one and then they have a really long one. Yeah. Helps them be heard. All right. So we got our perching feet. And... Our last one is our swimming feet. So our swimming feet, you're gonna draw three kind of toes with a little bit in the back there. And then you gotta remember the webbing because that's the important part for the swimming is that it's got that web in the middle that helps them push the water. So that helps them swim. I'm gonna write swimming at the bottom. S-W-I-M-M-I-N-G. All right, so we have all of our feet. We have all of our birds. So now we'll show you how to play the game. So I hope you remembered which feet go to which bird, because that is important. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to mix up all your cards. No cheating. We'll play with our, uh, if you want to color all your pictures, please feel free. You saw our example. We didn't really have time to color right now, so we colored some beforehand so you guys could see. Feel free to color great yours. Great flash cards to keep for the future and study and kind of yeah. keep it in your little education box. All right, so Melly and I are going to play memory together. So we're just going to be going to play with the white ones. So we're going to put them all in a row. I'm going to do four in a row because there are 12 all together. So we do four times three. It's an array for anyone who has made it to that part in math yet. Ladies out in an array, so that way we know we have four times three is twelve. We have twelve cards. All right, so now we're gonna play memory. So, uh, Melly, you want to go first? Sure. So what she's gonna do is she's gonna flip over any two cards she wants and see if the footprint matches the bird. Does this match, you guys? No. Emus don't swim. Now you have to remember where you pick the cards up at. Yes, put them back in the same spot. All right, so I'm going to pick this one. I got a duck. Oh, and I remember, because I was paying attention to what Melly picked up, she picked up this card, which was a swimming foot. So my duck is a swimming bird, so those match. So I get to take my cards and put them over here. Because whoever has the most cards at the end is going to win. All right, Molly, game on. Your turn. And chicken. Don't forget where you put a cap at. Ah, <laughs> uh, do hers match? Chicken and scratching? Yeah, I think so. Molly's got a match. Good job, Molly. All right, let's see. I'm going to choose this one. We haven't seen that one yet. Oh, a parrot. And I'm going to pick this one. Oh, a sparrow. Those definitely don't match because none of those are even feet. So I'm going to remember my parrot is here. The sparrow is here. I'm going to turn both of them over. It's Melly's turn. Perching. Perching feet. You remember? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I picked that up before I did pick up that bird, so she has to remember where I put it back down. <laughs> yeah, she did it. All right. <laughs> okay. I'm already thinking this. Question. Would you call this a good team building or kind of bonding game? Absolutely, yeah. Any where we get to play with each other, that's definitely a good team building game. I get a little bit uh, competitive, so. <laughs> I think it also works really well on communication, working together as a team, and, you know, working as three keepers, we work as a team, so I we, think it's a great We definitely team. have to work as a team. So it, it's really important that we all help each other out here. So we do like to work as a team because it gets our work done a lot easier. <laughs> All right, um, Melly's winning now. She's got two sets and I only have one. All right, well, climbing, and I picked that one up, and I remember because Melly picked up the sparrow, I know the parrot's over here. So the climbing feet go with the parrot. So I have two, two now. Ooh, Ooh. Okay. 
We only have two pairs left. Eagle. Eagle. And I don't think we've picked up any of these cards, so we're not sure where they go. Also, the thicker the paper you use, the better, because uh, it's easier not to see through the back. Ah, oh, she did it. Eagles are grasping feet, which means I only have two cards left, so I'm pretty sure these go together, unless we did something wrong. <laughs> Let's find out. Emu. Emus are running feet. Perfect. So those are the tie. You guys learned all about the different feet. So we remember our parrot, our grasping, our ducks, our swimming, our emus, our running, our eagles, our grasping, our sparrows, our perching, and chicken scratching. All right. So you guys keep playing at home. Um, and let us know in the comments who won and how your cards went. You can share your pictures with us. We're always happy to see your artwork and all your fun activities. Thanks for playing along. And again, thank you guys so much for any donations. So if you did want, if you didn't catch the beginning, we are asking people to add us on Amazon Smile. It's a really easy way to donate because that way you just set it up through Amazon and any of a little bit of the proceeds from whatever you buy goes straight to us. So that's a really good way that all that little bit adds up. The more people that add us on Amazon Smile, the better. So share it with your friends, spread it around. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> also, if you had any extra money that you wanted to donate to us on our website, lionhabitatranch.org, that link as well as the Amazon Smile link are attached to this video. So thank you guys so much for any donations, and we look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you next time.